Hubble has been in space for over 34 years, and its mission has been an incredible success. Although it wasn't originally designed to observe objects within our solar system, it has managed to do so throughout its journey, capturing extraordinary moments that would have otherwise gone unnoticed. Not every planet has a dedicated mission, and there's much more to see in our solar system beyond just the planets. Let's embark on a journey through our cosmic neighborhood, venturing from Earth to the farthest reaches of the solar system, exploring remarkable objects you might never have heard of, as revealed by Hubble's keen eye. We'll begin our grand tour close to home with our immediate neighbor, the Moon. Due to the Moon's large apparent size in our sky, Hubble cannot capture its entire surface in a single image. Moreover, other missions such as NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter provide far better images of the Moon. Thus, Hubble's time is better utilized elsewhere. However, in 2012, Hubble captured an intriguing image during a special event, Venus passing in front of the Sun. Why observe the Moon during this event? Scientists used it as a massive mirror to detect subtle variations caused by sunlight scattering through Venus's atmosphere. These variations reveal details about the atmosphere's chemical composition. Although Venus's atmospheric composition is already well known, this experiment tested whether the light scattering method produces accurate results. Hubble frequently applies this technique to study exoplanet atmospheres by observing distant stars as planets transit in front of them. Since the sun is too bright for Hubble to observe directly, using the moon as a reflector enabled scientists to obtain the data they needed. While capturing the entirety of the moon poses challenges for Hubble, the same is not true for Mars. Hubble often observes Mars offering a full view of the planet's disk, something orbiting spacecraft can't always achieve. These images provide valuable insights into dust storms, seasonal changes and other weather phenomena. Such information is crucial for planning rover operations and building a comprehensive understanding of Martian weather for future predictions. In one time lapse, a global dust storm envelops the planet, obscuring surface features. Mars is too small. Moons Phobos and Deimos can be seen zipping around the planet in the background, their rapid motion especially noticeable in the 42-minute sequence. Another time lapse focuses on Phobos, the larger and closer of Mars's moons, showing its movement over just 22 minutes. Phobos completes an orbit around Mars in only 7.5 hours, making it the only moon in the solar system to orbit faster than its planet's day. As we leave the inner planets behind and approach the first of the gas giants, we encounter the asteroid, Belt, a fascinating region filled with objects worth studying. Among them is the curious asteroid 6P78 Galt, a misleadingly named celestial body that has captured Hubble's attention. You might be surprised to learn that this object, which clearly resembles a comet with its twin tails, is actually an asteroid. Known as Galt, this asteroid resides in the asteroid belt and was imaged in 2019, so why does it have a tail? Scientists believe the answer lies in a phenomenon called the yarkovsky okeefe radzievsky paddock YORP effect. Solar radiation exerts a small but steady force on irregularly shaped bodies, and under the right conditions, this can gradually increase their rotation speed. In Galt's case, its 3.5-kilometer-wide body has been spinning faster over time and now completes one rotation every two hours, the upper limit of what an asteroid can endure. This rapid rotation generates centrifugal forces that are stronger than the asteroid's gravity, causing loose material to be ejected into space. These ejecta form the tails and over time Galt will likely disintegrate entirely. Like many other asteroids and comets, Galt isn't a solid rock, but a fragile rubble pile held together by weak gravitational forces. The asteroid belt, with its chaotic population of one to two million asteroids larger than a kilometer and countless Smaller ones is a dynamic region. To illustrate this, let's examine P2010A2. At first glance, it appears to be a typical comet. However, a closer look at its nucleus reveals an unusual filamentary structure. Surprisingly, this is not the comet's nucleus. It isn't even a comet. What we're seeing is an extraordinarily rare event, a collision between two asteroids. The X-shaped structure near the nucleus consists of debris from the impact, with rubble being ejected in four directions. 
Some of this material is pulled back toward the center of mass by the faint gravitational pull, while particles in the tail have escaped entirely. Despite the occasional chaos, most asteroids in the belt follow relatively stable, circular orbits around the Sun. But if an asteroid strays too far from this path, as comets do, it risks encountering a far more powerful gravitational force. Jupiter, often called the solar system's vacuum cleaner, is a dominant force in this region. Its immense mass accounts for nearly three quarters of all the matter in the solar system outside the Sun, giving it a gravitational influence that shapes the fate of nearby objects. A striking example of this occurred in 1994, when the two-kilometer-wide Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 ventured too close to Jupiter. The planet's gravity not only captured the comet, but also tore it apart, breaking it into several fragments. By the time the fragments impacted Jupiter, they were already scattered, marking the first ever direct observation of an extraterrestrial collision. Interestingly, Shoemaker-Levy 9 had been captured by Jupiter roughly two decades earlier and orbited as an active comet, a phenomenon also observed for the first time. However, its orbit eventually brought it perilously close to Jupiter's surface. The resulting tidal forces shredded the comet, and just a year later, its fragments collided with Jupiter at an astonishing speed of 60 kilometers per second. The impacts on Jupiter generated fireballs reaching temperatures of over 23,000 degrees Celsius, soaring an astonishing 3,000 kilometers above the planet's limb. The most significant impact left a dark spot spanning 12,000 kilometers, roughly the size of Earth, and unleashed energy equivalent to 6 million megatons of TNT, more than 600 times the power of the world's combined nuclear arsenal. While other impacts have been less dramatic, they've been observed and photographed, lending credibility to the theory that Jupiter acts as a cosmic vacuum cleaner, shielding the inner planets of the solar system from catastrophic collisions. Beyond its immense gravitational influence, Jupiter offers ethereal phenomena that captivate astronomers. For instance, Earth isn't the only planet to experience auroras. While auroras are visible to the naked eye on Earth, they are actually brightest in ultraviolet light. Thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope's ability to detect ultraviolet wavelengths, we've been able to closely study these dazzling displays on other planets. Jupiter's auroras are the easiest to observe, as the planet is not only the largest and closest of the gas giants, but also has a powerful magnetic field and intense radiation that generate incredibly bright auroras. In 2016, during the Juno spacecraft's journey to Jupiter, scientists seized the opportunity to measure solar wind en route and study its impact on Jupiter's auroras using Hubble. This collaboration allowed Hubble to monitor Jupiter almost daily for several months. The findings revealed auroras hundreds of times more intense than those on Earth, with a radiant power of 100 terawatts. Remarkably, unlike Earth's auroras, which appear sporadically during solar storms, Jupiter's auroras are continuous. This discovery suggests that Jupiter's auroras are not solely driven by solar wind. Data from Juno indicates that the planet's fierce radiation belts supply charged particles into the atmosphere via magnetic field lines. Additionally, alternating currents, rather than direct currents within the magnetic field, explain the aurora's radiant energy, a phenomenon that wouldn't occur with direct current energy transfer. After exploring Jupiter itself, let's shift our attention to one of its most intriguing moons, Europa. This icy satellite may potentially harbor the closest extraterrestrial life to Earth. Hubble has captured Europa in impressive detail, considering the vast distance. Europa is a major moon of Jupiter and one of the prime candidates for life in the solar system, not on its surface but beneath it, within a subsurface ocean of liquid water. Europa's proximity to Jupiter results in extreme tidal forces, causing what is known as tidal flexing. This process generates heat, which scientists theorize keeps the ocean beneath Europa's icy crust warm enough to remain liquid. Various missions have sought evidence to confirm this ocean's existence, with Hubble playing a surprising role. While spacecraft like Galileo and Voyager captured higher resolution images during their close flybys, they lacked Hubble's ability to observe ultraviolet light. Hubble has detected what appeared to be plumes of water vapor 
erupting from Europa's surface. If confirmed, this volcanic activity would suggest a liquid interior mantle, further supporting the ocean hypothesis. Since the initial observation, many more plumes have been detected on Europa. Hubble's capabilities were also utilized to identify salts on the Moon's surface. While most missions rely on infrared imaging to study planetary surfaces, since many key emission bands of substances are in the infrared spectrum, sodium chloride, or common salt, is primarily visible in the visible light spectrum. This limitation meant that Galileo missed detecting these salts, 